Luxury SUVs. These cars offer the lot. Practicality, technology, comfort, and perhaps most importantly, status. But which did you choose between the recently updated Range Rover and the all new BMW X7? Oh yeah, people, we have a clash of the titans of the SUV world. Great Britain against its old foe, Germany. But don't worry, we're all friends now, aren't we, eh? To help you decide which is the best car for you, I'm going to compare their designs. That big it is, isn't it silly? You could fire a whole barbecue on there. See how practical they are? You can really spread out. Critique their cabins. The gear knob rises up. Ooh. And find out what they're like to drive. If they're like, yeah, captaining a tank. But first, let's talk monies. The BMW X7 starts at £72,000 which means it's considerably less money than the starting price of the Range Rover, which starts at £84,000. The big Brit is generally more expensive. And for some people, this is actually quite reassuring. The Range Rover. I mean, it really is a status symbol, isn't it? Though it can look a little bit footballery if you have it in certain colours and trims. In fact, when my mate was negotiating his salary for a new job at a Premiership football club, when he's trying to up the money he was going to get, they just said, listen, don't worry about that. We'll chuck in a Range Rover. There's no chucking in a BMW or a Mercedes. It was just a Range Rover. And then it was job done. Speaking of jobs done, BMW's designers have certainly done one on the X7. Now, if I was lazy like other motoring journalists, I could just critique this car's looks by going on about its grill. Like, oh, look how big it is, isn't it silly? You could fry a whole barbecue on there. Oh my God, what they've done with this? Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? Oh no. But I'm not gonna do that right because I understand why BMW have done it. So the Americans and the Chinese who buy most BMWs like big grills, so it makes sense to give them what they want, doesn't it? And I have to tell you the truth, it's kind of grown on me. I think it works on this X7. So there. Inside, the German is far less controversial. In fact, it's rather conservative. All BMW's interiors look pretty much the same, but there's a definite added layer of quality here inside the X7, so it gets super soft. Merino leather, a standard, and there's loads of shiny bits of trim. And do you know what? I've grown to love the crystal gear selector as well, even though it is rather ostentatious. Everything you touch just feels luxurious and soft and it's all very nice. And oh dear, I've accidentally opened the boot. <laughs> the switch is just up there where idiots can operate it by accident when they're trying to show how much quality there is in a car's cabin. Thankfully, BMW's infotainment system is fairly idiot-proof, as it's easy to navigate, can be operated by touchscreen, control wheel, gestures, and voice commands. Hey, BMW. Hello. It's just a shame the digital dials are a little bit dull, and there's no Android Auto compatibility. You don't get these issues with the Range Rover, though overall, its slightly sluggish infotainment system still isn't quite as good as the BMW X7s. But what about the rest of the cabin? It's a very clean, simple design here in the Range Rover. There's not too many buttons at all. Part of the reason for that is that the climate control is operated through a touchscreen down here. They can be a bit awkward to operate when you're driving. So if you want to turn the temperature or alter the fan, you have to toggle between the two like that and hit this very small button. It's very small. In terms of quality, yeah, mm, lovely leather, lovely leather, lots of lovely leather about the place. It's all very, very nice and things feel expensive. My particular favorite feature is this. Look, when I turn on the car, the gear knob rises up. Cool. Uh, sorry about that, folks. I've reverted to childish behaviour. And speaking of children, the Range Rover is just as pleasing in the back seats. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely palatial back here. I can really kind of like spread out. <laughs> it's so roomy. And yeah, recline the seats for even more comfort. Oh, I could do miles in the back of this. It's even better than the front. But if you think the Range Rover is great for carrying people, then the X7 is even better. It's absolutely lovely here in the middle row of the BMW X7, and I can slide my chair all the way back and recline it as well at the same time to go for the full business class experience. I mean, look how I can stretch out. It's like a limousine, only one that's jacked up slightly. What's not so great, though, is that this middle seat is a little bit firm. If you're traveling three abreast, it's not great in the middle, but there is an alternative. You just have to pop out and then press a button, wait for the seat to do its thing. 
And once it has, it's quite easy to get into the very, very back in this third row. And if I just put the seat back, actually, it's perfectly comfortable back here. The seats don't sit too low like they do in other seven seaters. Got enough headroom, enough knee room. In fact, there's plenty of space to move these chairs forward if I wanted to, and the people in front won't be cramped. Decent amount of light through there, and this lovely sunroof as well. Brilliant. It's a good thing the X7 has the extra rope, as it's not quite as good for carrying three in the middle row as the Range Rover. Also in the Rangey, there's space for an adult to sit between two baby seats, whereas there isn't quite in the BMW. Though installing the seats in the first place is less of a faff in the X7, as its Isofix anchor points are just easier to access. But what about when it comes to carrying stuff instead of people? The X7 has a split folding tailgate. Though you do have to press this button to lower the bottom part like that. If I press this button, I can actually alter the load height so the car will sink down on its air suspension, though you can do that as well with the Range Rover. There is space, however, underneath here for the low cover, which is great. And you can fold down all the seats electrically, either individually using this, or I can just press this one button to go into full luggage mode and the car will do everything. It does take some time. While we wait for the BMW to do its thing, I have enough time to explain that the Range Rover also has a split tailgate, electrically folding seats, and a space saver spare wheel under the boot floor, something the BMW doesn't need as it has run flat tires, as well as slow folding seats. But it gets there in the end. When it comes to actually carrying stuff, it's safe to say both these cars have enough space for most people. And if you need to carry more than they can swallow, yeah, just get a van, all right? but then you would miss out on just how nice these luxury SUVs feel to drive. I won't lie to you, there is just something special about driving a Range Rover. Maybe it's the seats, maybe it's the fact that you've got that flat bonnet, maybe it's the fact that you're just higher up than in other SUVs. You feel like you're captaining a tank, because it is quite a heavy car, but it's also super relaxing, great for long distances, it's quiet, it's comfy. Ultimately though, I don't think that dynamically it's class leading in any respect, and especially when it comes to a twisty row because it lollops and rolls and it goes around corners to a fashion, but you can't really push it too hard. Otherwise it all gets out of shape. That's not really what it's meant for. Off-road, this thing is still the king. So if you do want to go off-road, then you definitely need one of these. Thing is, hardly anyone who buys a Range Rover will use its full off-road capability. In fact, an X7 will still do more than what most people could ever need, and the German is the better car to drive in the environment that matters most. This BMW X7 is a really nice car to drive. In fact, they've nailed every single department. The air suspension is super comfy, it deals with bumps brilliantly. The sound insulation is awesome. The engines, they're strong. The gearbox, it's responsive. It actually goes around corners all right as well for a big car, but it's better at the long sweepers and the tight stuff. It does handle slightly better than the Range Rover, but it's by no means a sports car. And one of the great things I like about this car is that you can get it with rear wheel steering. One of the problems with a huge SUV like this is kind of maneuvering around tight city streets around mini roundabouts. With that rear wheel steering, it turns the rear wheels a bit like a forklift truck and you can move it in and out of traffic like a normal car. Parking's a problem though, because this is long. It's longer than even the Range Rover, but that is my only complaint. It's a good car. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, the Range Rover, it is a lovely thing and having one of these parts on your drive will let your neighbours know that you've made a success out of your life. It's also brilliant off-road as well, though most people aren't going to go off-road, are they? And on-road, this BMW X7 is actually the better car. It's great to drive, it feels super luxurious, it's got the best tech and of course you've got the bonus of it being a seven-seater and that's why it wins this test. <laughs>